Hey guys, Doug Bernier from Pro Baseball Insider, and a question I get pretty frequently is, how do I make a diving play? What are some tips that will help me make a diving play more often? Now, this is always a fun thing because when I'm working with my young infielders, we have about five or 10 minutes left, and I ask them, hey, what do you guys wanna do? You know, at the end of the practice or whatever, they always come back to diving. They love diving. I mean, who doesn't love diving, right? It, it, it can be a very advanced and difficult play to make, but I also have three tips that will make the play a little bit easier and um, will, will give you a little bit more consistency when you are making a diving play. Bernier smothers it, comes up firing. What a play by Doug Bernier! A tremendous play by Bernier to get Matt Dominguez. Oh, it looked like a base hit. You know, it's gonna go into left field. Bernier diving for it, getting up quickly, and making a good throw over to Justin. That looks like a base hit. He got that little short hop, got up quickly. Nice defensive play. Now, the first one is more from a safety aspect, and that is to commit. Make sure when you are diving and you decide in your head, okay, I'm gonna dive after this baseball, that you fully commit to it. This is something that I learned the hard way when I was in seventh grade volleyball. Um, I remember we had to dive after, you know, you, you, you hit the ball after they spike it or whatever, and you have to dive into the gymnasium wood floor. I remember the first couple times I dove on that gym floor, I would panic midway through. I would start my dive and then I would almost kind of curl into a cannonball type thing. And instead of it nice being like a belly kind of slide, you know, and ride it out, it was a thud. It was a <laughs> and then I would roll and it, it was not pretty and it hurt. So I learned that in volleyball and I was able to take that into baseball. And I've seen guys that are just not good at diving on a baseball field. And a lot of it is they panic midway through. Once they leave their feet and they're starting to dive, you can see that they're not comfortable and that they're a little bit afraid. And so what happens is they bring their limbs in and instead of riding it out right here on your chest and belly and just kind of riding that slide out like you would be on a slip and slide, now all of a sudden you turn yourself into a rock and you just stumble and you fall and you just, you can turn in all kinds of weird directions. You can get your limbs caught underneath you. It's not pretty. So from a safety standpoint, when you do decide to go after the baseball and dive, fully commit. Don't pull up, fully commit and ride that slide out. Now the second tip I have for you is dive lower than you think. When we're diving after a baseball, we're moving this direction, most of the balls we miss, think about it, we're over the top of it. We dive over the top of it. So think about diving to the bottom part of the baseball or right where the ball is meeting the ground. When we're low, we can still adjust high, but when we're high, we're, it's, it's nearly impossible to adjust to a ball that it's low. So think about diving lower than you really think. Now, what also helps is with a lot of infielders, especially the young guys, when I say the last five minutes we're out there working on diving, I see a lot of kids dive and sometimes their glove is not even facing the baseball. So the gloves, the ball's coming this way, the glove's facing the wrong direction. Or sometimes I've even seen guys dive with their glove behind them. So their glove's not even open to the ball. But I, I noticed when I introduced this idea of, hey guys, when you dive, dive to the bottom part of the ball, dive lower, dive where the ball is hitting the ground. When that happens, I notice that the glove turns, the glove is open to the baseball, and now there's more of an intent to catch the ball rather than just the excitement of just diving and getting dirty. So when you do kind of put that focus on diving low, diving towards the bottom part of the ball or the, or the bottom part of the hop, now all of a sudden there's more intent with trying to catch the ball uh, like i said before and it's not just we're just diving over the top or we're just diving to dive so that adds a little bit more intent and it opens the glove to the baseball and remember just like you'll hear me say this all the time when your glove is open to the baseball you have a chance same thing when it comes to a diving play you're not going to catch it if your glove is not open to the baseball so diving lower than you think will give you a better opportunity to catch the ball more consistently and tip number three, what I have for you is work on popping up out of your stance. So once you catch the ball, you've dove, you caught the ball in your glove, it's a great feeling, right? You're so excited that the ball hit your glove. You knew it, you know, you know it hit your glove, but now you gotta pop up and be able to deliver that throw to first base. So what it's gonna look like is when we're in this position right here, we're fully extended, right? We're right here, we want to bring our arms in, 
get our limbs a little bit closer. And while we're doing that, notice my feet. I'm pointing my toes straight down into the ground. From here, I'm trying to develop some sort of push-up position so I can get up quickly. So right here, I'm just gonna turn over. Boom, now I'm on my feet. That's what I want it to be like. You can work on your progressions with your infielder. Start with the ball in their glove, just like I did right here, where they're not diving and they're working on just popping up as quickly as they can. Once they get that, now start with the ball in their glove. Have them run, dive, pop up, and make the throw. Then you can add a roll ball where they have to, now they have to judge the ball, go after it, catch it, dive, pop up and throw. So there's a lot of elements to this, but it starts with working on how to get out of that on your belly position up to your feet so you can make a throw. Now kind of the advanced element to this or advanced part of this, when you are diving, you're going after the baseball and you're riding that belly slide out. When you get almost to a complete stop, but you're not quite there yet, and you know you, you're running out of time and you need to get up to make that throw, when you start to pull your limbs in, when you start to pull those elbows in so you can get to that push-up position, when you start to point your toes so you have some leverage to push up from, now all of a sudden that your dive comes to a stop a little bit quicker and you're able to get up out of that stance and you can throw that ball over to first base. So the three tips I have for you when it comes to making or completing a diving play, number one, fully commit. Remember, we wanna be safe when we're doing this and when it's time to dive, dive and fully commit to it and don't halfway, when you're halfway starting your dive, just you know change thought and, and, and turn into a rock. We don't wanna do that. Stay on your belly and ride that slide out. That's number one. Number two is dive lower than you think. It's gonna give you a better opportunity to catch the ball, plus it's gonna keep the glove open to the ball. And remember, most of the balls we miss when we do dive, we're usually diving over the top of the baseball. And finally, number three is work on popping up out of that stance, because once we do catch it, now we're only halfway home and we still need to del deliver that ball to first base. So those are the three tips that will make this play, which is already an exciting play, hopefully happen more often. And when you see your young infielder actually make a diving play and throw a runner out at first, it is such a momentum swing. It is such a cool thing to see an infielder that you're working with make a play like that. You just see a big smile on their face and that's what it's all about. Because remember, there's so much in this game that is difficult, that's frustrating, that we put pressure on ourselves. But when you make a play like this, it just brings out all the fun that this game has to offer. So use these three tips and see if they can't help you with making the diving play a little bit more consistently.